got a stark warning today. A report says that the U.S. has lost its military edge and could lose a war against China or Russia. That is the conclusion of a bipartisan commission selected by Congress. Um, so explain, how, how do we get to this stage, Michael? Um, really two main developments. Um, one abroad um, and then one at home. The one abroad is that our main competitors, and we're really talking about China and Russia here, um, have for some time been investing in fighting a conventional war while we've been mired in 17 years of counterterrorism, counterinsurgency, non-conventional war. So we have not kept up. The other is a development here at home, which is the Budget Control Act of 2011 sequestration, which significantly cut defense spending um, and put those two things together, and they brought us to this place. President Trump meeting with the wife of U.S.-recognized Venezuelan President Juan Guaido at the White House. This is tensions, violence, poverty, and a 91% blackout blanket the socialist country. Trump today told Russia in no uncertain terms, back off of Venezuela. Watch. Mr. President, what sort of complications does the Russian involvement now pose? Russia has to get out. All right, what's your next question? You just said Russia needs to get out. Have you um, in any way communicated that through Mr. Bolton or through your representative at the United they Nations? They know. They know very well. They know very well. General, five words. <laughs> Russia has to get out. I love yeah. it. it. The eloquence is, is wonderful. But what was missing was the or else. Or else what? What I think is happening here is the Russians are buoyed by the successful Syrian intervention by their military to prop up the Assad regime. But what is stunning is this is the Western Hemisphere. This is South America. This is our backyard. Russia has two Air Force planes transporting dozens of troops and equipment to Venezuela's main airport over the weekend as opposition leader Juan Guaido tells the media that he's closer than ever to taking full control of the country. As the United States continues to push for Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro to resign, one of the leader's most important allies is now reportedly sending in reinforcements. Reports claim that two Russian military planes landed at Venezuela's main airport on Saturday, carrying around 100 troops and 35 tons of equipment. How far do you think Russia is willing to go to protect Maduro? By sending these troops, they have made a significant provocation and raised the stakes significantly. I mean, at this point, the U.S. has, has already recognized Juan Guaido as the rightful uh, leader of Venezuela. So Russia coming in now and going against the will, as was mentioned, of 60 countries that support Guaido is, is a bad thing. And we should keep in mind, this is not the only place that U.S. and Russian troops could potentially be on the ground together. In Syria, they are. Right. And there was a group of 200 Russian mercenaries that decided to try and take a U.S. base out in Syria. It didn't work. Uh, they got, well. No, they got returned to their component molecules. So I think <laughs> Putin should keep that in mind. There are some things I believe the president could do to get inside Putin's head. For example, his backyard is Ukraine. Let's increase the lethal aid in Ukraine over what we have already done. Mm -hmm. And maybe a, a little bit more than what we intend to do. Get his attention. We're under the streets of Helsinki, the capital of Finland, and I'm going to show you the elaborate tunnels and passageways they have. They go right across underneath the streets of Helsinki. It's all part of their civil defence. They won't say that it's to do with uh, a threat possibly from Russia. It could be a, a nuclear attack. It could be chemical warfare. It could be anything, but they want to be prepared. So now we're coming into one of the other tunnels. Have a look at this. These are the beds that they have prepared. Bunk beds that people can sleep on. They've got medical equipment ready. And then over here, this is how they would go to the toilet. So the toilets would be here. They've got the ventilation up there. The yellow lines on the floor are where each of the toilets would be put. 
and have a look at that tunnel there behind me. So you can imagine this runs all the way. If we kept following this, you would keep coming into some of those public areas that could be sporting fields or swimming pools, areas that can be easily turned into some kind of shelter for the people of Helsinki. They could fit 700,000 people in here. That's more than the entire population if they have to. And although they share this massive border with Russia, and there is this question about whether Russia is a threat to Finland, they say they're taking into consideration any worst case scenario, they're ready for it. Beneath the metropolis, that is Moscow, lies a second underground city, a labyrinth network of mysterious tunnels and hidden passageways. The complex extends kilometers underground, creating a rabbit warren below the streets, jam-packed with people and cars. Well, here deep underground, visitors to the bunker get a chance to experience what it would have been like if Moscow had ever been hit by a nuclear attack and this facility had had to have been used. The red lights start flashing out, the sirens wailing, and a voiceover explains that Moscow has been hit by a 10 megaton nuclear bomb, decimating most of the city. And I have to say, even though you know this is just part of the visit to the bunker, it certainly feels very real. Russia's capital has one of the most developed subway systems in the world, but these people say that there are many abandoned stations and secret tunnels still hidden from the public. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. They claim that there are from 6 to 12 layers uh, in Moscow's underground to explore. One of the most uh, famous secrets or just rumors is the private subway that uh, Soviet leader Joseph Stalin built which reportedly runs to different locations, including Kremlin, and stretching far beyond Moscow. Call it a possible message to Vladimir Putin. The U.S. military can quickly deploy to Europe to stop Russian aggression. In just the last few days, six B-52 bombers, the Air Force's nuclear-capable bomber, arriving in the U.K. 1,500 Army troops suddenly in Europe on short notice. Tonight, new signs the Kremlin might be moving nuclear-capable forces to its bases right on NATO's doorstep. Just as Russia celebrates five years since the annexation of Crimea, Moscow confirming it recently flew Tu-22M3 bombers over the Black Sea. Two lawmakers claiming the planes are now based there. The head of the parliament's defense committee stating, quote, the deployment of U.S. missile defense in Romania was a serious challenge in response to which the Russian Defense Ministry decided to deploy squadrons of long-range Tu-22M3 missile-carrying bombers in Crimea. This step radically changed the balance of forces in the region. The lawmakers and Russian official press agencies later reversed course and denied that the Tu-22M3 bombers or the nuclear-capable Iskander-M medium-range missile system were ever deployed to Crimea. The Pentagon has stepped up its military exercises to counter Russia, and Moscow clearly is not happy. They will always take any kind of deployment of U.S. forces to Europe uh, in a very negative way, and they will be very verbal about it. Uh, they will message it, say that it's a threat to Russia. They have always done this. Putin has stepped up his provocations in recent months, ramming a Ukrainian ship, and the U.S. has reacted consistently, sailing ships and flying aircraft in Europe and Asia, where Russia operates. But the top U.S. commander in Europe says it doesn't appear to be working. I'm not comfortable yet with the deterrent posture that we have in Europe. When you look at the, uh, both the building capability and the modernization of the Russian forces that, that we face there. And then finally, of concern is my intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance capacity, given that increasing and growing threat of Russia. 